Watch up, Ian Essential Handyman here. Quick project today, I got given a free old chest of drawers which will be perfect for repurposing for a stand for my thicknesser. So today I'm just going to go through how we strengthen that up and put some castles on etc. How we place the thickness on that and show you how it's done. So this is my Triton TPT125 thicknesser. We want to take it off of my workbench because it's damn heavy and it constantly having to lift it up is a pain in the backside. And put it onto this chest of drawers, the one in blue that I got given for free recently. Put the two together, we should have a nice little mobile worktop. I'm going to move around this thickness as and when required. As you can see, the chest of drawers is uh, the right size for it. It's got three really handy drawers, which I can use to put tools and things in. With the top being just really thin hardwood, we can't screw through down we screw through into the top we've got a center bar that's giving it a bit of stability and some small bars around the edges coming into corners so i'm going to mark i'm going to measure where this bar is here i'm going to move that dimension onto the top of the um onto the top of the chest of drawers so we know where we can drill into so using a tape measure if we put the tape here and hit that middle bar and see what the measurement is here we are at just over 200 millimeters. So if we put that mark here, 200 mil. Do one on this point here, see if it's square. Oops. Yep, just under 200 on that one. Put another mark here. Then we can straight edge this up. And we will know, let's belt and braces this. 208. We use an offcut of timber as a straight edge that will do. We can measure one inch here. One inch here. Again, draw a straight line. We know in that area there where we've got to put the centre fixings. I've got some old hardwood plywood here, 12mm thick. That's the timber I'm going to use just to put the top and the bottom on this thing. I find the easiest way to do this is not to make the measurements because this may not be square. So I'm going to take the shelves out so it's lighter. I'm going to turn this upside down on top of the plywood sheet and then I'm going to mark it out. Now, I want to get two out of this sheet if I can. This never happens in carpentry. Straight edge there, straight edge there straight edge there. This is exactly the dimension that we needed. That never happens. I'm going to just mark this down, the rest of it. If we look at this here, you can see this is the perfect width. We're about two or three mil off here, but that's not the end of the world. I'll fit this to the base because it's slightly off there. I'd like it to be perfect and I'll create another one out of that section over there for the top. A few moments ago where I said when you're measuring up bits of timber it never ever happens that you get one that, that, that the wood is the exact size that you want. Check this out. This is the top. Perfect there. Loads of room around here. Perfect along here. Perfect along here. Just got to trim it down about two mils with a plane. I 
unbelievable. Twice. Two measurements, both spot on. I'm not lying when I say, that never happens. Right, so now we're marking out for the top. One pencil mark needed only. Bit of a quick tip for you, don't know if you noticed, I was cutting with the jigsaw on my right hand, but as I got to the end, about six inches, I stopped while there was still enough wood there to support the weight, changed over, cut it with my left hand, and held the bit that was going to fall off with my right hand. If you don't do that, it's going to fall off with about an inch to go, it's going to break off, snap, tear out, it's going to look awful. So always support the bit that you're cutting, but do not lift it, otherwise the knife arrives. Just hold it gently. Well, we're back inside the super packed workshop. As you can see, we're a little bit wet from where the snow came down. I need to wipe that off. But I'm concerned that when I wipe it off, I might wipe off my pencil marks. So I'm going to transfer my pencil marks to my wood, which I need to do anyway, because I need to know where to cut. I'm going to transfer the pencil marks to the wood before I wipe it down. Okay, this is the top bit. It fits on there perfectly, just a little bit too big. And as I say, I'll take it off with a flush bit on the router. That'll be fine. Always get your, your straight edge with the board coming at the front and have your wavy, slightly off center cut bit at the back. Slight overhang each side so we can use the flush bit. Using any square edge you've got is fine. This is not precision joinery we're doing here. Let's put the top on a, uh, a rolling work base. I'm just going to be using 30 mil thick wood screws for this, so it doesn't come through the timber and, and into the drawers. Set our countersinking bit to the same length as the screws. Make sure we're centered. We've got a little bit of an overhang each side flush on the front we put one in each corner one in each corner we don't need much more than that Just need to strengthen it up. I don't want these screaming through, so I'm going to set my clutch fairly light. Yep, perfect. Not come through at the bottom. Okay, that's the top. Let's flip it over and do the bottom. Uh huh. Right, we've got these metal feet I want to take off. So there's the base on. As you can see, there's no central bars here. We're just working on about a one inch perimeter around the edges. Thank you. 
Okay, that's the base. <coughs> there's the top, there's the base. We're just going to neat up the top of the uh, boards with a trim bit in the router. <coughs> So the edges are a little bit sharp, I'm just going to round them off a little bit now. You see we've got the top up there, the base down there. Now I just need to put some casters on it. Okay, we've got four casters, we've got two that are standard two little locking ones I'm gonna put the locking ones on the front I think One last job before I bolt the um, thickness onto my thickness of trolley. I just want to get rid of these lines. Obviously, it's quite thin ply, so I don't want to go too deep. But I've got my handsome assistant Monty helping me. He's gonna, he's gonna do it for me. Let's go, son. <laughs> So drill some holes in the top. We've got a, each hole is gonna have a washer and a 70 mil M8 bolt. And go through and we're gonna bolt that up underneath. My advice I give to anyone who's like a handyman or does anything in a workshop, jobs like this, you're gonna need a bolt, you're gonna need washers, you're gonna need nuts, ring nuts or whatever. You never know what size you're gonna need. So always have your hardware stocked up. Always get yourself, you know, a selection of sizes of nuts, bolts, nylocks, wing nuts, washers, etc. Make our oh, clips, split rings. I've got all sorts of stuff here. Make sure your hardware is ready because you never know when you're going to need it. So I'm calling this job complete. This is the wheeled base that my fitness uh, sits on. I've put a new top onto a repurposed chest of drawers. A new base, I put four casters on the bottom, two of which have got lockable wheels. I uh, just rounded over the edges, I bolted this down on to the top of the um the top of the wheel base and I'm pretty happy with that. It's a really nice workable height and I've got all sorts of stuff I can store in the drawers as well, which in a small workshop like mine which is always crammed for the stuff is available. Probably going to build another couple of these. One for my uh, bobbin and belt sander and another one perhaps for my um, drill press. I don't know. That's the end of that video. Thank you very much for joining me. As always, give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do hit the subscribe button. It really helps build up small channels like my own. And I'll see you shortly in the next video. Thanks very much. See ya. Bye.